you're wanting to learn to spot your queen. Do you see her there? So today I've pulled a couple of frames out of a hive. I want to show you what you're looking at when you do your hive inspections. I want to walk you through different things that we see on a frame, whether it's good or bad, or what is it? You know, why is it there? How do I know a drone from a worker from a queen? And what does a brood look like? And what is this piece of frame doing there? Let's just, let's just look at these um, things on a frame and maybe that'll help you when you do your bee inspections. Hi, I'm David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. Good to be with you today. Here in Illinois, we're approaching the middle of May and it's so frustrating because the weather is still cold. <laughs> I have my coat on on May the 11th. Oh, it's terrible. When is it going to warm up? I think in another week or so, we'll finally warm up a little bit. Um, but anyway, bees are going a little slower, a lot slower. New packages are not expanding as well. If it's still cold at night, they can't grow as much. Bees are clustered. My bees aren't even flying today because it's only like 44 degrees and they're clustered. So you got to feed them from the top and uh, keep them going until we finally get some warmer weather. So hang in there and uh, just keep your fingers crossed. And um, before we look at those frames, and I'll, I'll point some things out, let me encourage you to take a beekeeping class with me. I have so many online beekeeping courses that you can benefit from that's so important, especially spring management. If you haven't taken that course yet, you may need that. If your hives are coming out of winter strong, you need to know how to make splits, get ready to collect some honey, stuff like that. And uh, also, I have a course on my control that's important this time of the year. And then eventually, in a few more months, you're going to need to take my course on how to get your bees through the winter. New paradigm in beekeeping. Don't buy into that old paradigm. Don't buy into all that old wives' tale about how to get your bees, you know, how you feed them. There's a lot of misinformation, ton of misinformation about beekeeping that's being just passed on and passed on. And look, the same number, if not higher, amounts of bees are dying every winter. Uh, so be sure and take my online course on how to get your bees through the winter. Now, let's pull a couple of frames out. Let's start walking through those frames. We're going to be looking at a frame today. And just kind of zoom in on some things and take a look at what's going on on some of these frames. Look at the pollen that's packed in here. Do you see that? There's a little bee either working a nectar or some pollen. But uh, this is cells full of pollen. And uh, it's kind of an orange looking pollen. Packed in there pretty dry. You can see it on the end of my stylist here. And i um, trying to hold my camera. Just a second here. Yeah, so that's pollen. And then we have some nectar over on these cells here. And if you look down inside of these cells, you can see the nectar glistening. And here we have in the corner, this is actually capped honey over here. And, of course, if you were to puncture it, it would kind of ooze out some honey. Let's try that. Yeah, see the honey under the caps there? There we go. Um, a few other things I want to show you is what we have in the middle here. Look at this. You have to move the bees around. To move bees around, you can take your finger like this and actually move bees off. And voila, look what we have here. Many of you might see these and wonder what they are in your hive and why they're there. So in my case, this is a hive that's superseding their queen. And I know that because swarm cells are down low. Now, these aren't swarm cells. These are just globs of comb that the bees have, have built there. And there's nothing inside of those. They're just wax. But here, these are queen cells. And they have built two supersedure queen cells. And what we would love to see is to see inside of them. But, you know, it's hard to always see inside, up close especially. 
But if we were to look inside of those, we would no doubt see some larvae in there. I don't want to tear them open to show you because I don't want to ruin uh, the only chance for a queen that this hive has currently. <laughs> but it's kind of bright too. But you get the idea that these bees are actually replacing a queen that they didn't like. And they're, uh, she was failing to some degree, so they're going to supersede her. Okay, so we've had, we have that going on. Just showing you some stuff that you see when you look at a hive and look at a frame of bees. Um, sometimes you're tempted. Let me see if I can turn my light on. If I could actually gain some ability to look inside those supersedure cells. All right, now we have a light. Coming. Maybe we can see inside those supersedure cells. Right in here. See if we can see anything inside of there. It's interesting trying to see. Um, it's hard to do it on camera. I can't tell um, by holding my camera this way. I'm going to have to wait and look at the video feed. Obviously, you can tell that they're, these bees are feeding what's inside of there. Let's leave our camera on. And look at the pollen here. Look at these uh, great scenes of pollen down in the cells here. Um... All right. Okay, so, um, you know, when you look at a frame like this, you might see a lot of different things going on in a hive. Uh, we see some pollen. We see some nectar. We see some honey. We see some supersedure queen cells. All right, so here we go with the frame from the hive that I split on one of my recent videos. So if you look down in the cells, um, you'll be able to see some different stages of some young brood down in these cells. Sometimes when you're looking at young brood like that, uh, I want to make sure I don't see any European fowl brood. And so what I'm looking for is very white, glistening young larvae None that are brown or gray or twisted in the cells. And then, of course, uh, here's the queen. If you're wanting to learn to spot your queen, do you see her there? She's looking around in cells. Right here. Beautiful, isn't she? So that's what a queen looks like. Uh, again, this is a hive that I made a split. This is an overwintered colony queen that rode through the winter. And I pulled out four frames. She's a beautiful looking queen. You can see the different bees taking care of her, feeding her mouth to mouth right now. Kind of getting her ready to start laying. The group of bees around her is called her retinue. Retinue, retinue. They're caring for her, cleaning her, absorbing her pheromones. All is good. Uh, here's a drone over here. You see, uh, some of you wonder what drones look like. That's a bigger bee uh, than the worker bees. The male drone. might see several drones in here. It's a cold day, actually. 
today it's uh, about 60 degrees and so most bees are home that's why I decided to grab this frame and just kind of walk you through what it looks like. Uh, here's a few cap cells. Well, there'll be more cap cells underneath here. The reason the bees are all congregated is because if we take our finger and kind of move them away, you'll see there's cap brood underneath there. And they need to keep that 92.5 degrees. And in where there isn't any, there's larvae about ready to be capped over. Larvae is not so temperature sensitive as the pupating bee is. And a lot of good brood down in here. The queen's been laying really well. So anyway, you can see uh, this is cap brood. This is what cap brood looks like compared to honey or nectar glistening in cells. The bee on my finger. They just kind of walk around sometimes on your hand. There you go. Where'd our queen go? There she is. She's still kind of walking around up in this corner. Yeah. Um, I was going to show you a few more drones. Here's one here. See the big drone there? I'll pull him out here by himself. See if he'll pose for us. Yeah, there he is. The male drone. You can see he's different and a little bigger in size. He's different anatomy. He's got bigger eyes. His eyes touch in the middle. He's a brother to all the girls. All two drones together there. Normally they'd be out on a mating flight, but today they're home because the weather does not uh, satisfy their um, requirements to go flying and mating with virgin queens. Of course, once they mate with a virgin queen, they die. Fall to the ground dead. There's our queen up here again. how calm it is to take bees and play with them like this. So I've got my uh, little uh, support piece that I sell. That I use that in the hive. It's called a frame prop that I invented. And I can do this on top of other frames, but I'm doing it on my picnic table. And I spend a lot of time like this. Bees are very calm on the frame. I spend a lot of time just looking and observing, getting familiar with what I'm looking at. Sometimes when you're in the hive, and all the bees are uh, all around you, you know, it's hard to learn and to to take in a lot of information. I'm going to pick up another bee here. Let me see if I can grab her. I want to show you this bee. Oh, yeah, here we go. Look at this. Put her out here. Look how white she is. Do you know why she's so white in color? She's a baby bee. She's brand new. Look at her. Wow. She's camera shy. <laughs> But that's a, that's a new bee. She's wandering away to the other side. She'll be fine. She went underneath to the other side. She's camera shy. She's like, I'm so new. Do you have to videotape me? I'm embarrassed. But when bees are brand new, and fully, they're just emerging from comb, they're very white in color, very light, kind of a blonde hair color style. <laughs> All right, well, I showed you some things like drones like right there's a drone and um we looked at some cap brood we looked at some young brood down in these cells and looking for white very white beautiful glistening larvae we saw the queen she's still right here by the way if you're looking for the queen again hard hard to find her it, setting us a, a frame like this on your picnic table like i'm doing and just practicing finding the queen you know like find her there she is and then look away and look at other stuff and then say okay i'm gonna practice you know finding the queen oh where'd she go it's see you don't even see her anymore do you oh there she is right there so you can just practice over and over finding the queen. It's really good practice. To take a frame like this, take it out of your hive, set it on a picnic table like I've done. See the storms are kind of coming in, but I've set it on my picnic table and I'm just videotaping and learning what I'm looking at without the fierce battle of a hive. Look at this honey, up, capped over honey up here, right? Just push on it and it oozes out. And watch how quickly the bees will come to repair the damage.
got to take a look at that, don't I? Taste it. Mmm, very good. Had a very clover, fl clover type flavor. Let me show you a few things about sealed capped over honey. Uh, one time on my master beekeeper test, the question was, why are these holes in the honey? I don't know if you can see them real well, but you can see their holes there. We could give several answers, and I did. But these holes are that uh, honey, that cell may not be fully capped over yet. And they're going to cap it over soon. Or they opened it. They drilled into it in order to use it. So, you know, there can be several reasons why you might see partially uh, capped over cells with honey in them. There's a bee that's like, okay, let's clean this up. All right, let's try it one more time. Let's find the queen. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where she is. Do you see her? Some of you, you're always like, I have the hardest time finding the queen. Now, if you can't see my queen, you have got to be blind. I'm pointing right at her. Come on. See her abdomen, how, how big her abdomen is and her thorax. Look how they're just licking her pheromones. You see her now? She's beautiful. I love this queen. She's right here. Underneath the bees right there. Up against the wood. Right there at the tip of my stylus. She's walking. See, that's why it's hard to see queens sometimes when they get down in the edge of a frame like that. You know, you can't really see her, can you? She'll slip across to the other side, too, and then you've lost her. <laughs> Well, this is the cage uh, box that a bunch of queens came in. And what I want to do, I want to lay a queen cage. I've got a queen cage in my hand. And inside the queen cage, I have a queen and about three or four attendants. Now, I suspect when the queen comes out, she is going to be flighty. So I'm going to try to see if I can get her to come out and walk into the group of bees over here. I'm going to position my cage just right, like it's on the ground. The door is open. So let's see what happens. Two workers. There's the queen. And she walked into the group of bees. All right. That's cool, isn't it? So what, what happens now? Well, I'm just going to throw these in the hive. But I was just wanting to see if they became flighty, what the queen would do. And we'll just watch for a few minutes. All these bees uh, really enjoy the smell of the pheromone that's all over the cage. That's why they are on the cage right now. And let's just keep an eye out for the queen. Sometimes uh, you can see her walking around. Uh, that's the tip of a spoon over here. I put a spoon there a few days ago full of honey just to help them take care of the queens that I had in here. So I wanted to take a queen and make a hive out of this group of bees that I've been caring for my queens in here. That um, they're, no, they're no longer needing to take care for any queens. They might as well start to make a hive. So, you know, sometimes you can just look around and wonder, where's the, where the queen now in this big group of bees? Could be that she's deep within this big pile of bees. So, let's move the queen cage out of the way. Let's see if I can grab a hold of it. Shake all those bees off of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let them settle down. Anybody see the queen? Isn't that cool? 
How about we pick that spoon up and spoon around for the queen, maybe? See if we see her in there somewhere. Sometimes she will walk on the outside of this uh, big group of bees, known probably best described as a cluster. Let's move the spoon. Grab the handle of the spoon. Anybody want a spoon full of bees? Oh, that is a spoon full of bees. Look at that. They're stuck. It's stuck because the bees are festooning and holding on to it tight, tightly. All right, there it is. Look how they're, that's festooning. See how they're holding on to each other's hands or feet, legs. Well, let's see how long we can make a bee string. Don't let go. Hang on. We're going for distance. Don't let go. We can do this. Come on. Don't let go. Looking good. I feel like it's going to break. I feel like ones at the top aren't really, their legs are really stretched. We need to, we need more to fill that gap. Get down there and help that one out. There you go. All right. That's better. Whew. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. It's actually, there it went. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? Spoon full of bees. See if the queen's in there. Yeah, I doubt it. Nope, no queen. So let's use the spoon to move these bees around while we look for a queen. See if we can spoon up a bunch of bees. I'm not hurting them, I'm, I'm just kind of carefully moving them around. I didn't see the queen anywhere. Just don't want to smash any. Just kind of gently go through there and move them away. Nope. Sometimes when I'm catching a swarm, I'll spend a long time looking for the queen like this. And I feel like I, if I get the queen, then I have the swarm. Don't see her. Well, I'm going to go dump this in a hive now. I'm going to dump it in a five frame nuke, see what they do. Thanks for watching the video today. It's good to be with you. Please subscribe. And I appreciate that so much. We're trying to reach 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're on target to do that if you do your part. Forward these videos on to your beekeeping buddies and friends and family, whatever, and tell them to subscribe. Ring the bell, because when you ring the bell, when you click on the bell, <laughs> you will be notified each time I make a new video like this. And if the weather ever warms up this year, we'll make more videos. And so by you clicking thumbs up that you like the video, it inspires me to more, make more videos for you. So please give us a thumbs up, tell us you like the video, and I'll get inspired to make more. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.